Hello YouTube, Trey Mark Kill here. Today we have a, another Ruby Talk for the Volume 4, Chapter 12, the finale of Volume 4. And it was a really good episode. In this ep and uh, just so you guys are wondering, I just had knee surgery, so I don't have a lot of cameras set up and my room's a mess. So you guys are just going to have to deal with the Ruby Grim Eclipse in the background. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. The main thing I just want to talk about, because I, I, I a lot of this stuff is probably going to be in my chapter, my vo uh, volume review that I'll be doing later. Uh, and I just kind of want to talk about a lot of the hints that we got towards volume 5 and kind of an overview of like kind of the episode. Because I actually did shoot pretty well for this episode. I said that uh, first I thought Ren or Nora was going to die. I got that wrong. Uh... And I said Uncle Crow may die if Ren and Nora don't. I had a pretty wide margin of for, for error there, and I missed it all. They all, uh, assumingly lived because we do see Crow get rushed to kind of and taken care of, well, when he when he's laying in bed, presum presumably recovering. And Ren and Nora are fine, so that's kind of wrong, and that's uh that's I'm actually gonna talk about uh something, possibly a little controversial. A, uh, in the next few weeks videos that I'll be putting out but yeah uh, I did get the uh it right that in some way shape or form Mistral was going to come to the rescue and rescue them and they did it was a, a air patrol from Mistral uh, the Mistral army did uh come rescue them because they were in the area and saw the smoke and explosions which I did call so I was kind of happy about that and the way they killed the Horsemen of the Apocalypse Grim was very, very cool. Uh, pinning it down, and then the kind of the this the the solitude that they gave Rand for and for avenging his family uh, was very was a great little detail that they, that they gave him when he was like, "For my mother, for my father, for all those that you have slain, and for myself." And he and he, when he finally killed the the Grim. It was a great moment, and it actually makes a uh, brings the dagger that his father gives gave him at the end of his flashback. Uh, it uh, brings that into play, so that was pretty nice to uh, to do. Now towards the end of the episode, we do see kind of a lot of movement from Weiss and Yang. Yang's in uh up and moving finally. I originally thought that Yang was on the boat to Menagerie, but it is actually she was on the boat to Animus, and she is right outside of Vale, as we see. Or sorry, right outside of Mistral, as we see towards the end of the kind of epilogue speech that Ruby gives, which is a beautiful speech, which I'm going to do a more of a more in-depth analysis later if I can. So. That that will come uh, maybe might be a part of the next episode, might not, because I still have the Ruby review, and I have something I want to talk about a little bit more uh, in depth because I've seen a lot of hate on this volume, so I kind of just want to talk about it from a different perspective. But we see Yang getting in the movement there during the uh, epilogue speech that Ruby's giving when she's writing her letter home to Yang, who is actually basically right on on her uh, hotel doorstep, basically, uh, but. Yeah, we also get the movement from Weiss where we see her uh, pay off what looks like Atlas personnel to kind of carry her abroad. We don't know where she's going yet. Uh, it, not sure. We know that she is looking at going to Mistral because her sister's there. So it's possible that. But also, if you think about it, why is that cargo ship going to be going to Mistral? If there is a threat of possible war, could just be them trying to keep up good relations, but who knows. But we do know that she is in some way going to go to Mistral because that's where her sister is, so that's kind of uh, assumable. The biggest question mark we have is going to be Blake because we see her going through what looks like a chest of old stuff and she pulls out the White Fang uh, shirt or, or flag that has the claws through it. Then you know she also pulls out the White Fang logo. That's the blue kind of solidarity logo that they had previously before the group turned violent. So you kind of get an idea what she's going to do. And she, again, her movement is already presumed because of the huge amount, because of the you know what what she said in a previous episode where she said that he wanted to take the White Fang back. 
that's kind of what's going to be her move. That's we so we had the already assumed movement for Yang, sorry for uh, Blake and Weiss. Now the thing about Yang to go back to her is we don't know if she is looking for her daughter, her sorry her sister, or her mother because she has a picture of them as she's on the boat going to Mistral or Animus. Uh, and she, all she says is that you're going to be in a lot of trouble when I find you. Now, that does sound like a sisterly thing to, do, to say, but it could also just be her f- had it, having enough with her mom's shit and finally trying to go find her. But it could, but again, it looks like they're both kind of pleasantly in the same place. So whether she's looking for her mom and finds ruby coincidentally or whether she's looking for ruby and finds her mom coincidentally it's probably going to come together um possibly more looks like it will come together at least in volume five one of the interesting things i would just want to note from the ruby speech is that she says that uh they ran into uncle crow and that she he's told them a few things that she that he, she doesn't uh, tr- trust will get to her th- uh in, in, through a written letter which might be the things about the uh like the four freedoms that they talked about that each school has like this incarnation this physical symbol of like of uh i can't remember the four but they have a physical symbol so uh and each four each school has them it could be stuff like that or more in-depth stuff uh, stuff about salem so that uh that was an interesting little note but they also showed ozpin's staff so there might be he might have had to leak some stuff to about ozpin's past which Hopefully, when they all get together, they'll have a sit down and a sharing of information, and we might be able to get a little bit more information on Ozpin. But speaking of Ozpin, we do have an after credits that gets pretty interesting. After credits is Ozpin or Oscar walking to a bar to meet Crow. Well, not to meet Crow. There's no, they're not like designated to kind of meet. Uh, but I guess Ozpin is telling Oscar that's who you need to meet. And after a little bit of teasing, like they, you know, they shouldn't let kids like you in a place like this. What, what? That's basically what Crow says to Oscar. Oscar says, "Yeah, uh, I believe it's time for you to give me my staff back." And that kind of triggers Crow to realize that this is, in some way, shape, or form, Ozpin in his in his new form or new body or whatever that is. And he gives him the staff back, which is most likely going to be the key to the vault. That's going to be very, very important because if it was just a staff. It probably wouldn't have been that prominent and he probably wouldn't have had to ask for it. It would probably just been, Oh yeah, I have this thing of yours. So it's, we can look at the staff at being very, very important now, but that was an interesting little situation. Knowing that we have crow, Ospin slash Oscar Ruby, Possa and depending on what Yang is actually looking for at this immediate moment, Yang in the same area. So we have, you know, a good chance of having at least half a team Ruby come back, if not three fourths, having a good mentor in Crow. They probably would leave if they didn't, t- if Crow didn't leak anything about Ozpin, he would probably uh, keep o- who Oscar is under wraps. And. Yeah, that would be that situation kind of set up. And then we would have to move, I believe, Selena Khan, the leader of the White Fang, is somewhere on in Menagerie. So I'm not sure. So not Menagerie, sorry. But in... I can't... I think I believe they said Mistral. So we might have Blake there, but we don't know for sure what direction Blake is going to go in immediately because right now she's actually still on Menagerie. So that could be another uh, storyline to go into Volume 5 of her leaving. Possibly we get the uh, we get to see uh, Adam Taurus's raid on Menagerie to get back at uh, Blake, but we have we that's a little bit more speculation, and I'm going to go a lot more into d- a detail of these uh, as I heal up, I'm really tired. So if I sound really tired, that I'm still recovering from surgery, uh, from knee surgery. So that's kind of all I kind of want to talk about today because, yeah, as I said, it's really tired. My sleep schedule is all out of whack. So I have a, do have a few videos planned. I'm working on a few details on one, um, working on analyzing and kind of trying to transcode the speech that Ruby gives. That uh, and the other one I don't want to talk about yet, and then my full Ruby volume 
full review, which should happen next week or the week after once I get to rewatch everything in order. So thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, Trademark Kills out. Peace.